Welcome to our Marine Interfaith Council Monthly Meditation. My name is Scott Quinn. So glad you're joining us. And we are blessed to have with us tonight a very, very dear friend of the Marine Interfaith Council, uh, Dr. Laley First. Uh, Dr. Laley First is a student of Sufism and a longtime member of the International Association of Sufism and the Sufi Women's Organization. She's given lectures on Sufism at colleges and universities and presented at the annual Sufism Symposium and Parliament of the World's Religions. Laley served on our board at Marine Faith Council from about 2003 to 2008, and again from 2014 through 2021. So we are deeply enamored with Laley, always grateful to you, Laley, for the gifts that you offer us, for your presence, and for um, who you are. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction, Scott. It's, it's truly my pleasure to be here. And I thank um, an Interfaith Council and, of course, to Scott and Esmeralda and to First Presbyterian Church for their continued hospitality in sharing their beautiful space with MIC. I'm grateful for this chance to introduce the teaching and practice that is so precious to me for Oh, I hate to say so, more than 30 years now. And I'm especially grateful to my teachers, Dr. Nahid Anga, Dr. Ali Kyanfar. So as always with these Wednesday meditations, we will welcome everyone here and thank you all for coming and hold respect for ourselves, for everyone here, and we respect the privacy and Anything that says is said here stays here. And you're welcome to participate as you wish. We'll have open times for questions and discussion. You may speak if you wish, and you may remain silent if you'd rather. Also, I'd like to wish Eid Mubarak to, um, actually to everyone. It's a, an especially auspicious time, actually, for this meditation because um, the Eid, Eid al-Fitr, which we celebrate today, is the marks the end of the holy month of Ramadan, which for all of us uh, Muslims and probably even more so for Sufis, is the time that we recognize the heavens are open to human beings. And it's a time during the entire 30 days month of Ramadan that meditation is particularly important. We observe uh, special practices and extra meditation during this time in our strong desire to become closer to knowing our own selves and being closer to our Creator. So, and as always, I'm sure it's true for all of you, there's a lot of stuff going on around us and our lives are very busy and we're very, very blessed. And again, thanks to MIC for carving out this time. We have this little short time together. We have our hour that we have all come together and agreed to focus on our own selves, on our spirituality. So for this one hour, I invite us all to let go of everything else. For one hour, they can all wait. Even my pesty cat who wants all my attention, he can wait for an hour. Don't tell him I said so. All our worries, our concerns, our obligations, our duties, everything can wait for just one hour while we focus on our own selves and return to the place of peace, tranquility, safety, wisdom that is within us. Dr. Kyanfar has taught, in the heart of every human being is a direct connection with God. Our greatest blessing comes in discovering this. Dr. Nahid Anga has taught, in Sufism, the law of meditation follows the essential rule of self-discovery. And that happens when a seeker is attracted and attuned towards the divine. 
I was thinking about earlier in this month of Ramadan, I was thinking about meditation and the spiritual path and spiritual growth and realizing that we human beings are definitely aware of our bodies and our mind. And for many of us, this includes the concept of soul in our thinking. Probably we're all familiar with the story that's told of God creating humans by gathering up clay or dust, forming a body, and then breathing into that body from his own breath to give to the human being life. I know I've heard that story from early in my life, even though I was not raised in any faith tradition. Sufis follow the teachings of the Quran, the holy book of Islam, which is part of the Abrahamic traditions which include Judaism and Christianity. And this same description of the creation of human being is in the chapters of the Quran. This topic is really timely to our focus right now on meditation, since we start with the knowledge or belief that the spirit of the creator is already within each one of us. The goal of meditation for Sufis is to direct all of our energy into the point where that spirit resides, to nourish it, so that we can become closer to the source of that spirit, which is the creator, the creation, existence, God, Allah, or whatever name our minds give to it. I don't think scientists and philosophers have come up with a clear definition of life, but we usually associate this concept with movement and respiration those sorts of things. From a different perspective, we might come up with a different definition. The Sufi master, Dr. Nahid Anga, has written, whatever is not under the definition of change and death is life. Not the manifestations and the outward aspect of life in existence, but the essence of life. So it's not what we perceive as life in terms of movement or respiration, um, all of those human or animal or plant activities, but it is the very essence of life. In the understanding of Sufis, everything associated with our existence in this physical world is exactly as Dr. Anga described, under the dominion of change and death. So this means our bodies, our minds, our senses, logic, reasoning, and so on. We could view life as the energy that was breathed into us at the creation. During meditation, we Sufis search to find the location of the point of light energy that connects us to our source, and we look for that in our hearts. Dr. Anga has written in a recent commentary, for a human being who, according to the dictates of nature, has learned to rely on his senses and regard them as the doorway to knowledge, it is difficult to take a different step to build the foundation of his understanding. Knowing is the unveiling of the essential center of knowledge inherent within every particle, including the human being, which has perfect knowledge of its own self. Again, knowing is the unveiling of the essential center of knowledge inherent within every particle, including the human being, which has perfect knowledge of its own self. So we see that we have the essential center of knowledge wrapped within our own self. It is a place the mind cannot reach. 
it is within our heart. And the different step we need to take to unveil this center and build the foundation of our understanding is precisely meditation, which is very different from thinking. So the goal of meditation as you probably know, especially if you frequently attend these Wednesday meditation sessions, there are all kinds of meditations. Generally, all kinds of meditations are useful, and each has its own goal and its own practice. For Sufi meditation, again, just to make it really clear, the purpose of meditation is to find the point of connection in our own heart. In the heart of every human being is a direct connection with God. Our greatest blessing comes in discovering this. So what do you need for Sufi meditation? One thing, first thing, is a longing heart. That you can't deny. You can't deny you're alive. You cannot deny that you're connected. You can't live without knowing. Knowing your own self. Knowing this connection which in turn connects you to all of the existence. The other um, important necessity for meditation is a teacher, an experienced guide. So, and that would be the one who has traveled the path before you. One who is familiar with the uh, states and stages, the pitfalls, the problems. Um, our minds are brilliant. Our imaginations are brilliant. They are, oh, I see a couple of smiles there. Our minds will cheerfully lead us astray. Same as our cats or dogs or whatever our distractions may be. The teacher is the experienced guide who can help you to clear the path, help you by explaining things, help you by dusting away, pushing aside the dust that comes between you and your own self. The teacher does not draw you to him or herself. The teacher helps guide you to your own self because we each have our own point of connection. We each have our own center. The Sufis would say we each have our own religion because the religion really means the truth of your own self. So I will lead us in a brief heartbeat meditation, but I'd like to stop for just a moment before we start the practice to ask if there are any questions, anything that's not clear or things that are new to you. And I can't see everyone. Scott, if you could go ahead and call on people or unmute them if there are any questions. I don't see any questions. Uh, okay. All right, we'll continue with the meditation practice and then we can open it up for questions, comments, anyone who'd like to share their experience um, when we're finished with the meditation. So the heartbeat meditation is especially important um, in for Sufis and in my own school, uh, which is Nuwesi Tariqat, uh, School of Sufism. And one of the things that always is so precious to me when I hear our teachers say this, the heartbeat, when you sit quietly and can hear your own heart beating, that is the confirmation that you are alive. The heartbeat, when the, from the moment of conception, when the two cells come together and form one cell, and then gradually, as, as I understand, tubes form. Tubes of, you know, as the cells multiply, they form into tubes and then they fold together. And then by an unknown impulse, as far as I know, science can't really quite explain it, 
but it's like a spark of energy. And I likened it to not a few days ago, but a few years ago. I was at the total eclipse. And that moment when you see, and I'm sure you all saw it in the news, the diamond ring, that effect, where you see just the outline of light around the sun and that one spark. And that's, that's the, way, the image that popped into my mind when this was explained to me. But it's like a spark begins. These tubules are forming a little bitty heart. And that starts the heart beating. That's the beginning of life. And life continues as long as the heart is beating. And life ends not when the brain isn't working. The life ends when the heart is not beating. So that's the heartbeat that is the confirmation, absolute confirmation, that we may, oh my gosh, doubt everything about ourselves. Did, did I say something wrong? Did I make a bad decision? Did I do that 20 years ago and put my whole life off course? any number of things I can worry about and not be certain about. But I can be certain that I'm alive. And especially I can be certain when I sit quietly, so quietly that I can hear my heart beating again, again, again. That is certainty that I know it's still generating or receiving that electric impulse and I am alive. That's the meditation we'll be doing tonight. And that's kind of a foundational meditation for the Uvesi Tarikat. And it, it's not very complicated to explain. You'll want to sit very straight, upright, have your back straight. You can have your feet tucked in underneath you or put them on the floor as you wish. We generally close our eyes to help avoid distractions and give your essential self privacy. Privacy from one another, but privacy too from all that stuff that's going on. And while we're practicing, you're welcome to turn off your video if you prefer. You're, you may close your eyes if you wish. I would encourage it. Um, but if it's not comfortable, don't do that. And then we'll gradually release all the tension from our physical self to help us with our concentration. We'll concentrate on our breathing and just be aware of our breath coming in and going out, which is absolutely connected to the be beating of the heart. I was very intrigued to learn that there's a Persian word, dan, which means both breath and blood. So it is the circulation within the body of both the air, the breath, the breath of God, if you will, and the beating of life, the beating of the heart. And then we will focus on listening specifically to our heartbeat. So let us now begin, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera, and I will speak quietly to you. So again, I invite you to sit very straight, yeah, wherever you're sitting, but be comfortable because you'll want to be able to focus on your heartbeat and nothing else. So we'll try to make our bodies comfortable enough so that they will leave us in peace for even just a short time. Our bodies always want our attention. This hurts. That aches. This is out of whack. For now, we want to let all of that go. So let's sit with our backs very straight, being comfortable, closing our eyes. And let's begin with a scan of our body to release any strain or tension that we find from the top of our head. You know, sometimes I feel a knot in my head from thinking too much. Meditation is not for thinking. So it's time to let the brain relax. Let it be. If 
stray thoughts keep popping up, just let them go. Acknowledge them and let them go. Then travel down your spine to your neck and your shoulders. A lot of his desk jockeys carry tension there. And we'll want to release it. We can do that by focusing our energy there. And one thing that works for me may help you too, to breathe in. Specifically focus on your neck and then your shoulders, breathing into those areas. Hold your breath for a few seconds. And as you breathe out, breathe out through your mouth and let all the tension that you found there, let it go, let it release. From your shoulders. And down your arms. Once again, focus your attention there. Breathe into those areas, both of your arms. And as you breathe out, feel any tension just flowing right out your fingertips. Let it go. And travel on down your core, through your torso, your chest, your stomach. all the bones in your spine and travel down them one by one. Anywhere you find some tension, breathe into that area with intention. Send a healing breath towards that area of your spine. And then on the out breath, release whatever tension was there. and your hips. Breathe into them. Release tension on the out breath. And your legs all the way from the top of your upper legs to your knees calves, shins, breathe healing energy into them and release tension on the out breath. And your feet, your heels, the arches, all those little bones that go down the top of your foot, all your toes, each one of them, they're all valuable. Breathe in healing energy and release any tension. And now once again, make sure your back is very straight. It's a channel of communication. You want it to be very straight. And feel your presence your physical presence 
here and now. You are here, you are. Breathe comfortably. Then gather your energy. All the energy that we scatter outside ourselves all day long. Noticing things, hearing things, seeing things. Absorbing energy from other people. For now, we set all that aside. Gather all our energy inside. Inside our own self and draw it towards your chest. Focus your energy on your own chest. Then bring that energy into your heart, your physical heart. The point of spiritual connection is within your physical heart. As you gather your energy into your heart, try to focus on one point. Perhaps you can see a point of light right in the middle of your heart. Look for that. Focus your energy on a point in your heart and try to see that point of light energy. It may appear as a star. Even if you see it only for a moment, try to stay with it. See that point of light in your heart. And listen. Listen to the beating of your own heart. You may find this easier if you hold your breath for a moment. Listen to your heartbeat. Listen to your heartbeat.
Listen to your heartbeat. Listen to your heartbeat. your mind starts to wander and tries to distract you, let it go. Don't argue with it. That's what minds do. But let it be for now. Focus your energy on listening to your heartbeat. Confirmation that you are alive. Listen to your heartbeat.
I invite you now to take a deep breath, breathing in, healing, cleansing air. Hold it in your system and gradually release it. Now, as you come out of this state of meditation, again, breathe deeply and then gradually release it. And when you're ready, I invite you to put your camera back on and let us rejoin our circle. And I'd like to open it for any um, sharing. The people would uh, feel comfortable to share their experiences or if any questions came up. 